foreign account in Paris to Count and Countess Cassini, a family with ancestry that dates back to the First Crusade. His grandfather was the Russian ambassador to the United States. Cassini studied in Florence, apprenticed her pateau in Paris, and opened his own boutique in Rome. Later, Cassini headed for the glamour of Hollywood. He worked for all the major film studios and dressed their stars. In 1942, Mr. Cassini became an American citizen, and to show his patriotism, he joined the U.S. Coast Guard. In 1950, Mr. Cassini started his business on 7th Avenue. A businessman by the name of Bill Hunt gave him $100,000 to start it up. This is where the magic begins. In Mr. Cassini's autobiography, he states the following. Cassini would stand or fall alone on my ideas. I needed someone to talk to, a partner, and so I invented one. A skeptical manufacturer whom I, the designer, was constantly trying to convince of the merit of my work. Our dialogue was continuous. I went around talking to myself all the time. Well, what is going to be our message, the manufacturer would ask. Are you going to be a California designer? Who are you designing for? Who is your customer? Where will she wear these clothes? Who will you hang with? Who is your competition? I'm going to do something new, I would argue back. It will reflect the things I've always believed in fashion. In 1960, Jacqueline Kennedy named Mr. Cassini her principal designer. Mr. Cassini had thought a great deal about her, he said, before convincing her of the wisdom of the appointment. He spoke of her, sphinx-like quality in her eyes, which were classically very beautifully set. His training as a Hollywood costumer served him well. He very much understood the notion of creating a persona, a visual identity for Mrs. Kennedy. The Kennedys were the first couple to emerge in the television age. Oleg very clearly understood the demands of that age, that clothing needs to be read from a distance and have to have clarity of line and strong color. One of his first ensembles was a fawn beige wool coat and a small sable collar, accompanied by a matching pillbox hat. Mrs. Kennedy wore the ensemble to her husband's inauguration. Soon it seemed women all over the world were wearing A-line dresses and pillbox hats. In 1963, JFK was assassinated. This severed ties between Cassini and the First Lady, and so Cassini had to start from scratch. His business wasn't the same, and so he knew the only way he could survive was by going into licensing. He went into licensing almost any product imaginable. He put his name on it. From cars, shoes, bridles, he did it all, and he was extremely successful at it. He made about $350 million just in licensing. This was Cassini's chance to make clothes for the average woman, which he always wanted to do because he loved America so much and believed in the equality of each other. He did something totally new in the fashion world, going into licensing, and he says in his autobiography that he was the first to do this and that other designers should give him credit for it. What makes Ole Cassini so special is the fact that he was an American designer. Not only was he an American designer, but the oldest American designer of all time. He died in 2006, but his memory still lives on. His collections are all at the Metropolitan Museum, and FIT has some of his clothing as well. Mr. Cassini was an American first, and you can tell because he went into franchising, which is a totally American concept. He believed in the American dream. He came to America with a tennis racket in his hand and became one of the greatest American designers of all time.
I needed someone to talk to, a partner, and so I invented the one, a skeptical manufacturer whom I, the designer, was constantly trying to convince of the merit of my work. Our dialogue was continuous. I went around talking to myself all the time. Well, what is going to be your message? The manufacturer would ask. Are you going to be a California designer? Who are you designing for? Who is your customer? Where, where will she wear these clothes? Who will you hang with? Who is your competition? I'm going to do something new, I would argue back. It will reflect the things I've always believed in fashion. Tragically, in 1960... What makes Oyo Cassini such an amazing designer is the fact that he was an American first. He believed in the equality of everyone and wanted to design for the average woman. And Cassini finally got to do that at the end of his career. Not only is he known for being Jackie O's designer, but he was the first to go into licensing, which made him a phenomenal businessman and proves you can go anywhere and create the American dream. Cassini went through so much in his life, many ups and downs, and today he is known as the oldest American designer of all time. He still has a successful licensing agreement with David's Bridal.